Well, in this talk, we want to consider the spirogram. Now, spiro just means to breathe. Now, what we've got here is the volumes of the lungs. And we're thinking about a young fit man here. The lung volume might be six liters altogether, going all the way down to zero at that point there. And of course, you can breathe in and you can breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. We have this tidal flow. So when you're at rest, we've just got this gentle tidal flow of breathing, breathing in and breathing out. And this volume we call the tidal volume. And we notice that the tidal volume, the tidal breathing takes place between about two and a half litres, that'd be 2,500 mils of total lung volume and about three litres. And the tidal volume itself is about 500 mils. But about 150 mils of that 500 actually just goes into what we call the dead space in the conducting airways. So only about 350 mils of that actually gets to the alveoli to refresh the alveoli. So in gentle breathing, you might remember the external intercostal muscles contract, the ribs go up and out, the diaphragm flattens when it contracts and goes down, increasing the volume of the chest, thereby reducing the pressure and the air is sucked in. Then the reverse happens, the ribs move down and in, the diaphragm moves up and we exhale. And this is going on all the time when we're alive, of course, because we have to keep breathing. That is normal tidal ventilation. But then we can make a big effort, or we can get our patients to make a big effort, and we can say, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, all you can, breathe in, breathe in, until you can't possibly breathe in anymore. And then we can say, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, or you can. You can try this yourself, it's quite interesting on a spirogram. Breathe out all you can till you can't possibly breathe out anymore. And then just go back to normal breathing. You need to put a clip over your nose so all the air goes through the spirogram. And then you just go back to normal tidal breathing after that. So all we've done here is breathe in all we possibly can till we can't breathe in another drop of air, breathe out all the way we can till we can't breathe out anymore. And this gives us quite a lot of fascinating volumes to help us learn about the nature of the chest and the thoracic cavity and the lung volumes. So we can see that the very top here is, is round about six litres. That's round about six litres in a healthy man. Now that gives us a figure from here to here, from there to there. And that is the inspiratory reserve. Volume. So the inspiratory reserve volume is from the top of where we normally stop breathing in to where we can breathe in every abs make an absolute effort. And in a young fit man, that's probably going to be about 3,100 mils. There. Young fit woman, 1,900. Depends how big you are, of course. You know, bigger people are going to have larger thoracic cavities. So that's all we can possibly breathe in. So that means we've got another figure from, um, from here down to here. We can notice there's another volume. And that volume there is the inspiratory capacity. How much we can breathe in from where we normally finish breathing out to the maximum we can breathe in if we make a special effort. And the inspiratory capacity in a man is probably about 3,600 mils of air. 
And in a woman it's going to be less, maybe 2,400 mils of air. Now, if we sort of draw a line along there, that comes to about 1,200 mils. It's all we can possibly breathe out. So that's interesting because it gives us a capacity from all the way up here, the maximum breathing in, all the way down to the maximum breathing out. So from the most we can possibly breathe in to the most we can possibly breathe out, and that is called the vital capacity. The vital capacity. And in a man that might be 4,000. 800 mils of air, and in a woman, 3,100 mils of air. The vital capacity, the absolute most you can breathe into, the absolute most you can ever breathe out. But of course, we see that there's a bit at the bottom here we haven't been able to breathe out. So from there, all the way down to zero, we can't breathe that out because we can't collapse the chest enough. And that's called the residual volume. You can never breathe that out. And that's probably about 1,200 mils in a man and 1,100 in a woman. So you can never quite breathe that out. So that means we can see that from where we normally stop breathing out to the absolute maximum we can breathe out if we make a special effort, that is our expiratory reserve. Volume. And that's going to be about 1,200 in a man and 700 mils in a woman. So from where we normally stop breathing out to where we can breathe out if we make an extra special effort. And actually we notice if we can extend that maximum line across there, that six litre line, the absolute maximum we could breathe in, and we take that all the way down to the figure where we can't breathe it out, but the total absolute total capacity. We would call that the total lung capacity. Bit of a theoretical figure because you can never breathe that much out, but that might be six litres in a man and 4,200 mils of air in a woman. So we see we have lots of interesting figures here that tell us about the physiology of the lungs. And it doesn't take a great leap of the imagination to see we can use this to study disease of the lungs. So for example, if someone's got emphysema, they're going to have hyperinflation of the chest. The residual volume is going to be increased if there's hyperinflation. Because that's the problem in, in emphysema, the patients can't breathe out adequately. It's difficult for them to breathe out and the lungs become hyperinflated. Or if we're breathing out here, you can breathe out fairly quickly if you've got young healthy lungs. But if you've got partially obstructed airways, for example in COPD, especially if you had bronchitis or chronic asthma, it's going to take longer to breathe that out because the airways are partially obstructed. That's why we can measure a figure called forced expiratory volume over one second. How quickly we can breathe out or how many mils of air we can breathe out over one second. So you might be able to breathe out four liters in one second. You can breathe out very quickly if you have open patent airways. But if your airways are narrowed, it's going to be harder to breathe out. And the forced expiratory volume the air you can breathe out in one second is going to be reduced, indicating airway obstruction. So lots of interesting physiology going on here in terms of ventilatory volumes, and that can quickly be related to lots of pathological pulmonary lung disease situations.